Hey, welcome back to another video, everyone. I'm happy to have you here. We're gonna be covering what has changed in the last 26 months of doing Amazon product research, how my perspective has shifted, what the best methods are now, how I was doing it when I first started as a beginner, and then what's changed after two years. So that I hope with this video, I can really save you two years of time and just condense your learning span right down into having the knowledge of someone who's been selling on Amazon for two years in just one 15 minute video or whatever this ends up being. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you are new, but without further ado, let's jump right into it. So I'm gonna move over into my computer here and all we have open is the Jungle Scout product database. There's a very specific reason for that because we're going to be doing this chronologically. This is how I first started doing Amazon product research. Okay, so I started learning about Amazon FBA private label in the end of 2017. I was watching a lot of YouTube videos and then around tax season of 2018, the beginning of 2018, I got a tax return. I was a part-time employee at Staples. I was a certified technician selling computers there. And then I got my tax return, it was about $1,300. And I used that to start my LLC. And I used the remaining amount that I was just saving up from working my um, normal job there at Staples to invest in Amazon. And one of the first things I did was I went ahead and I purchased Jungle Scout. I was watching a lot of Tanner J. Fox's videos. That's what he used. So I figured that's what I should use as well since I'm familiar with that process. And then this is really where the road starts. So let's get into it. This is my first method for doing product research and this is how I was doing it in the beginning. A lot of you still might be doing it this way now um, and that just goes to show how much can change and you know why I don't think that this is necessarily the best way to find products anymore, but this is how I was doing it again. So the way that you would do it with this is I would generally select just a few categories that I wanted to sell in. Um, I don't need too many categories, right? Just a few will do, because that'll show me, you know, maybe I'm interested in just five categories here. And then within those five categories, this tool, you're basically gonna tell it to show me only products within those categories. So anything that's unclicked will not appear. Then I'll simply go over to my filters and we have a bunch of filters here and my minimum price, what I would have done back in early 2018 is I would have set a minimum of price of about $14.99. And I probably would have done that because well, that's what people were telling me to do. And then my maximum price, I would have probably put around 50. So 15 to 50 is a good range. Um, that's what I would have done back then. So again, we're, we're going over how I would have done product research back when I first started with this part of the video right now. Max reviews, of course, would have been 75. I remember this like it was just yesterday. Minimum sales would be 300. Uh, minimum revenue, uh, we're not gonna do that because we already have minimum sales, minimum monthly sales. Um, if I were to do minimum monthly revenue, I would probably do about $7,500, but we don't have to touch it since we've already implied a minimum monthly sales. Um, then we go over to weight. We wanna max that out at one pounds. And then that's all I would do. I would simply hit search and this is gonna run through a database of products and it's gonna kick back only products that meet our criteria. So you can see any product here will have a price that's between 15 and 50. It will have reviews lower than our threshold of 75. It will have a rating, well we didn't change rating. Um, it will have, where are the monthly sales? Monthly sales of over 300. And then revenue will just be um, you know, directly related to what the price is multiplied by monthly sales. So I would just simply look through here, and I think my best way of describing what I was looking for was something interesting. The weirder, the better, is what my mindset was. Um, and I thought if you could find something, and I was kind of on the right track, honestly. I, I didn't have quite a uh, refined skill set back then, but just summing it up like looking for something weird is exactly what I would have said back then, and that's really what I was looking for. So I didn't know exactly why I was looking for anything other than just objective data analysis not necessarily analyzing all the right things, but what I would have done is I would have clicked on something, let's say this uh, stainless steel hex bolt or something. No, that's not that interesting, but I would simply click on that. And then what you would do is you would take this product ID, uh, product listing, and we don't wanna just look at one listing, we wanna look at all of them. So I'd go stainless steel hex lag bolt screws. That's the product. So I would then go to all departments, I would search that, and then I would begin to analyze this product for what it is. Now this is the market, this is where I want to, um, Oh, that's pretty cool. Amazon does that. That's nice. I, I haven't seen that yet. New update. So I would look through here and the first thing I would do, I wouldn't even look through there. I would just pull up Jungle Scout Chrome extension. I would have both of those running. This is my, my next go-to. And then all I would be looking for was this. Seven out of 12 under 75 reviews. Seven out of 12 over 300 in sales. And the price range should be between 15 and 50. And the brand should be not just one brand. It should be a variety of brands. And that was about it. That was really what I was looking for. And then I would go ahead and if it met that criteria, which this doesn't, I would simply move back to the web app 
and I would start looking again. So that's early 2018 Paul. That was what I was doing when I found my first product. Um, I actually found it with a slightly different method that we're gonna be going over next. So um, this was one of the main things that got me into product research and that's my mindset then. Now, that might be where you are now. So let, let me take you and transport you to maybe one year in, okay? So let's go 14 months ago. How was I doing product research? Um, maybe the end of 2018 or the beginning of 2019. How did just that one year change my perspective on product research? Well, what I started to notice when you do product research for a very long time on a product database or any kind of database of products, you start to realize that, wow, I'm seeing a lot of the same ideas, <laughs> okay? Uh, how many times am I gonna scroll past uh, this product here before it gets old? So I started getting really sick of seeing the same ideas. So I said, you know what? As an entrepreneur, I need to be a good innovator. I need to think outside of the box and I need to come up with a different way of finding products so that I'm not just putting in criteria because anyone could just put in this criteria. And if I learned this pro if I learned this criteria from someone and 100,000 people saw that video and maybe uh, even half of them are doing it, we're all seeing the same products that can't be that productive. And again, this is just my thought process at the time. I wanna remind you that what I'm saying right now might not be my current point of view, but I really do want to walk you through the progression and the evolution of how I came to where I am today. So I was thinking, you know what? Why don't I just start right on Amazon? Because what are the odds that someone can do exactly what I'm going to do on Amazon? So this method transpired around this time frame. So I do a negative sign and a bunch of random letters. Okay, and if you don't know what that does, it just searches for everything that that is not. And then it simply allows you to click into a category. Okay, so now I could click into home and kitchen. And then what I would do is I would just keep, I don't know why that didn't work. I would just keep clicking into these categories here. And then you can see, once you click into a category, it just opens up another one. So then maybe I do outdoor recreation, and I do camping and hiking, and you just keep clicking randomly until you get to a place where you can't click anymore. So then maybe I go, uh, you know, hydration and filtration, and then I go, whatever, water purifiers, fine. Okay, so we end up at this final market. And then this would really be the beginning of my journey. So I, get, I got pretty creative. And what I started to notice was that maybe this page isn't that great. Now you could look through here for water uh, or product and water ideas, product ideas, and maybe you'll find one. But what you can also do is you could click on the page two and then something interesting happens in the URL. The URL indicates that you've clicked on page two. You can see page equals two up in the URL. So what I would do is I would go up here and I would simply change it to like page 50 or something, okay? And then as I'm looking through here, now this is too extreme of an example because we're in such a niche uh, category. This one didn't happen to be too big. But what you end up finding is that there's a lot of weird products back the farther you go into the pages. And I would literally sit here and organically look through all of these categories for products. I was literally doing product research. I was simply going on Amazon and I was looking for random products, okay? You gotta go like this, stove accessories, camping, okay, here we go. And then I would just simply scroll through here. If I got to the bottom of page one and didn't see anything that I liked, I would simply click on the page two. And then if there was a lot of high reviews here, what I would do, like for instance, you know, there's 18,000 reviews. I mean, I don't know why that's there. It's just randomly sponsored, um, but here we go. So I would just technically look for things with very low reviews, and then I would pull up my Jungle Scout Chrome extension, because that's all I was using at the time, and I would just try and see things that are doing well with low reviews. This one is kind of barbaric when I think about it now. It's a lot more hard work than is necessary. Um, I was all about doing it this way, and you always are about doing it your current way until you learn a better way, right? So that's just how it works. You can't really uh, harp on how you used to do something and think you were, you know, totally wrong because, well, you didn't know what you didn't know at that time. This is how I was doing it. So this is how it changed eventually. So maybe you're in this position where you've moved away from software and you've almost gone completely for organic searches. And I still would like to say there is a better way in my opinion. So now let's move on to the last way, the most frequent way that I'm doing product research now, uh, here in 2020, actually about halfway through 2020, um, that has found me my current best-selling product, which is my macrame shelf. Um, which just in the last 30 days has done close to $14,000 in sales and has netted me over $5,000 in profit. This product research method is far more lucrative because as you know, one of, or maybe you don't know, one of the most important things about finding a good product to sell on Amazon is that that customer needs to fit two main pieces of criteria. It needs to have a existing customer search volume uh, in the thousands preferably, and it needs to have a lack of high quality competition. Um, so basically what that means is there should be room for you to move up to page one. 
Okay, if page one's already stacked, page two's already stacked, you're gonna have to fight through all those sellers and it's gonna be a lot harder for you to stand out. But if there's a need of a customer and you know that need because you know that, hey, there's 3,000 people looking for this thing and it, there's only three of them and all three options suck. I know I could provide a better option. Well, that's it's, it's just common sense that's gonna work out for you. Okay, so let's show you that method. So for this one, we're gonna move over to Helium 10's black box keyword research tool. I'm addicted to this research tool. Um, it really changed the way I do research and it is phenomenal, okay? So this, the reason that this works so well is because I get to cut out all of the searching really. I get to just say, only show me things, search terms that have search volume. So already I know that whatever I'm looking at, there are going to be customers interested in it. And I get to dictate here with this filter how interested they're going to be. Um, so this is an incredibly power tool, powerful tool. If you don't have this already, there will be a link down in the description and it is a discount uh, applied if you use the link Savage 10 for 10% off every month or Savage 50 for 50% off your first month. You get to choose either way. You get a discount if you go buy it without the link, you don't. So I um, just thought I'd remind you of that. Now let's get into it. So search volume, I know that I want at least a thousand customers to be looking for my product, at least, right? So I just want one keyword that's making a thousand customers search this thing every single month. Very simple. This is a threshold. Anything below that won't show up. Anything above that will show up. Now I could simply do something like 10,000 here, just in case I don't want to see anything that maybe if any one keyword has 10 to 50,000 searches, the odds are that there will be pretty good competition for that. But just to be a little bit more lenient, maybe you'll go 17. So I think that's a good range. You really don't have to max out your search volume, but I just find that it gets rid of some of those super trendy ideas that aren't going to work out anyway. Now for monthly revenue, I could go do something like 7,500. Maybe I'm netting 40% of that. That would be happy. That would be happy. That would be good. That would make me happy. Um, that would be a perfect amount of profit. I'm not asking for too much from any one individual product. Maybe you're asking for more, but I found that the more greedy you get with Amazon, it, the harder it gets. If I could just simply profit 50 to $300 a day, somewhere in that area, that's phenomenal. Now, I'm not going to be profiting $300 a day at $7,500 uh, a month, but on the high end of things, I'm saying that's the minimum. So price range here, we're going to go to um, a minimum of about $10. Anything, you know, even slightly below that would work. Cause again, we're just looking for ideas. If you really don't like selling low price products and you have a problem with that, no problem. Go ahead and bump it up to 15 or 13. So you catch all those 14.99 products. Just know as you raise this higher and higher, your cost of goods is gonna go up. So if you sell a pro I sell a product that's actually 54.97. Um, so that actually wouldn't be included in here, but I'm at the premium option in my market. And that might not be great. Uh, option for a person who's just starting to sell on Amazon. It's rather expensive product and it is, you know, you probably need existing cash flow to fund things like that. So review count, we're going to go ahead and do a maximum of 100 reviews. Just want to see on average that whatever is being searched, the results that are yielded have under 100 reviews. That means that if I come in with 10 or 20 reviews, there might be sellers like me. So it won't be weird for me to collect sales if everyone already has within that range. I don't seem like an outlier anymore. Then we can move over to word count. We'll go two to seven. And all that means is that there's going to be, for instance, Mac or my shelf is two words. Mobile game controller is three words, anywhere from two to seven. Anything under two words, just one word. It's very hard to get to an exact product. You end up more like searching for markets. Now, just like the product database by Jungle Scout, we have an option to select categories here. So I'm just gonna select a couple that I like to sell in, mainly where I'm focused on building brands. Do something like patio lawn and garden, industrial scientific, maybe tools and home improvement. Um, some home and kitchen and some arts, crafts and sewing. Now we're going to go ahead and hit search for this. One really cool thing that you could do with this tool though, however, is include a keyword search. So maybe you wanted to look for only things in the decor area, or maybe only things in the farmhouse niche, or only things for beach. Now that'd be kind of seasonal, but you get the point. You could go ahead and do something like that, but for the sake of this video and just showing you um, how I'm doing it now, I'm gonna go ahead and just search without any of these advanced filters, although from time to time I will use a lot of these. For instance, age is one I've been experimenting with lately, which basically means don't show me a market where the average listings are older than seven months old. That means I'm gonna be getting into an underdeveloped market where they haven't had time to get a ton of reviews and a ton of uh, momentum. But we'll go ahead and just use the base here. We'll go ahead and hit search. And what this is gonna do, you might notice it'll just show us product names, um, or really even, Search terms, they might not even equate to one specific product. They're gonna be search terms that have over 1,000 search volume. See how that works? 
So all we're gonna do is we're gonna simply look through here and then instead of looking for product ideas and individual ASINs, we're looking for entire markets. And the reason that this is so cool is because I already know that I need customer search volume. So I'm just taking a little bit of the work off of my shoulders. Uh, if I already know that what I'm looking at must have at least a thousand searches, I already know that there's an existing customer base to sell to. And my only job becomes simply looking through here um, and then moving on to see my next criteria, which we'll be getting into. So wire mesh roll, it has 1700 searches per month. It has an average of 564 searches. The average monthly revenue is 15,000. Um, and the reviews are under 100, 99. Go ahead and hit view on Amazon, wire mesh roll. Look through here and I'm simply gonna look for how many there are. Um, it looks like there are a lot, but there are a lot of variations. So maybe there's one specific kind like this really tight woven mesh that sells a lot better than this hard, uh, this much larger spaced one. Maybe people just haven't caught up on that. They're, they're going way too big and maybe the whole market is looking for something that's basically that big. So that's when I'd start deploying a little bit of my intuition to go, well, what is this used for? Um, let me go look at reviews and figure out what the customers are mostly using this for. And let me go ahead and pull up a tool like X-Ray and analyze what's selling the best. Because if I know what has the most monthly sales, we could just simply sort by monthly sales here. Um, let's see. Rodent control, right in the title there. That has 50,000 sale, uh, 50,000 in revenue every month. Uh, the reviews are rather high for that one. What I always like to see is who has low reviews but is doing really well. So this one has 54 reviews. And they're selling $18,500 worth of revenue every single month. Imagine if you were even at a 30% margin there, uh, you would be making over you know $5,500 every single month. That's just absolutely phenomenal. Um, so we'll click into this one and see what they're selling specifically. And what do you know, it is the tight weaved one that we um, said that might be what people are looking for. So then what I would do is I would go back and I would try and find the next one with uh, low reviews. Here we go. Both of these have under 100 and they're both selling the really tight mesh. Well, that one's actually a little bit thicker. Okay, so <clears throat> two of the lowest review ones are both selling a tight weaved mesh. Good, good to know. Now I could start going, okay, what's this? Wow, they're doing really good. Some of these are just absolutely crushing it. So we've stumbled upon something that looks rather good here. The only thing I'd say is this probably is seasonal. Um, I'd have to say that something like rodent control or a mesh for gardening is probably gonna sell only good for part of the year. What you can do to check that is just simply open up something like a all time sales chart by Helium 10 here by clicking on the sales graph and it'll show you when the sales are the highest. So in this case, they all seem to be trending up in the right direction. I don't think at any point of the year it's necessarily too low. Um, and that one was for this one here. Um, let's maybe go to our friend down here who only has 54 reviews, who's doing so well. We'll click on his graph, see when he started selling, or she. So it looks like they sell, started selling just at the end of this last year. And they have actually just been picking up momentum this whole time. So it looks like it was selling good in January, 12 to 20 sales a day, that's phenomenal. That was the winter, and now we're here almost in summer. Oh, well, it is summer, I believe. Or is that June 21st? I don't know the solstices. Uh, so they're selling fantastic. They're up trending. It's going great. I would go do that in a couple more. Then I'd also want to see that there's just a lack of overall competition for one specific style. So maybe I see this copper one. What's up with the copper one? I only see that showing up once or twice. Is that something that someone's looking for? I know that this one was doing like, you know, well over uh, 50,000 revenue. Why isn't there more copper ones? So those are just simply questions I start asking myself. Notice all of my research and all of my analysis at this stage is geared towards the customer, not the competitor. We started with customer search volume. We started analyzing based on how many customers are buying what. We started making decisions based on reviews. Uh, we didn't look at any, but that was a recommendation of mine. We started looking at what are, um, what are key features of each products that a lot of the best sellers have in common. Okay, so what I would recommend is that you go ahead and give this version a try. Now I'm not saying that the other versions of product research don't work, but I just wanted to give you a, a good idea of how I've developed as an Amazon seller and how I've developed as uh, you know an entrepreneur pursuing physical product sales and of course needing to research those sales in advance before I go ahead and make an investment. Hopefully this video was valuable to you and you be sure to like and subscribe. Um, if you didn't like it, that's okay. Dislike and unsubscribe. Um, but anyway, that's gonna do it for today's video. Be sure to comment down below what your favorite product research method is, just to give me an idea of how you guys are doing product research. And other than that, I'll be seeing you here on the channel tomorrow for another video. Thanks so much, later.